Well, into the service park after stage 12. And Tommy Mackinnon's Mitsubishi crew into action, refettling the suspension for the harder stages to come, including the 36.9 kilometer city early in the season. Well, on the pack stage, Sainz only eighth fastest, 30 seconds off the pace. Frenando mucho, para izquierda media, poco tarde de tierra. Abelita, Abelita, cuidado la media. Pasa en tercera. Para derecha, buena más, se abre para uno. Abelita. Don't forget, although they're not on totally slick racing tyres, they do have a tiny pattern on them. They are effectively working as slicks. Colin McRae with a slightly harder tyre choice, but quicker through the stage. The gap between them, now just 13 seconds. First rally back with Colin, and you're fighting with him again. <laughs> I think it's... Uh... Um, Might just get away. Yeah, I tried a bit harder in the last one, but I'm still having tr trouble with the gearbox. So stage on day three, he was 3.7 seconds quicker than Tommy Mackinnon. Just to show everybody that he still hasn't lost it. Don't forget, Kankinen won his first World Rally Championship event back in 1985, the Kenyan Safari Rally. Well, of course, Kankinen had an agenda of his own. He was chasing Tony Gardemeister at stake, fourth place. And it was on this stage that Kankinen struck. Gardemeister had a dreadful time on the long stage. Ninth position, a minute and two seconds slower than his fellow Finn. And that meant he went down into fifth place. Chatting here with Kankinen and Mackinen. And Mackinen, the one of the three flying Finns in the top order, really setting the pace. After 13 stages, two to go on the Monty 2000. Tommy Mackinnon leading by two minutes and 16 seconds over the two Fords. Kankinen, Gardemeister and privateer Bruno Thierry, the rest of the point scorers. More in a moment on Eurosport, Europe's sports leader. at his first event for Seat Didier Oriol. Out on stage 14, the penultimate one of the event with an engine problem. Cruel luck for Oriol, cruel luck too for Colin McRae, the last stage of the event saw his grip on third place disappear. Last year it was done after the event in the courts, this year it was done on the event, the engine cried enough. McRae hasn't finished an event since last May. Nine rallies now without making it to the finish and the disconsolate Ford crew with Father Jimmy there really can't do much about it. It was fantastic uh, to see the car second and fourth lying. As we said, it's disappointing. Sixth place for Freddie Loikes in the final classification, just overhauling Bruno Thierry. Well, that little spin in stage 13 didn't slow him down greatly. And the Mitsubishi Charisma GT works driver pulling one point for sixth position as he overhauled Bruno Thierry. Uh, as he caught Bruno Thierry rather, but Bruno Thierry holding on to fifth place, the uh, best of the privateer cars. The ex-Toyota Corolla run by the Griffoni team. Fourth place, Tony Gardemeister, moving up one again after Colin McRae's disappearance, and he was unable to take the battle back to Juha Kankinen. So it was Kankinen who would hold on to third place at the end. Fourth top places, three of them filled by Finns. Juha Kankinen, after winning again in Argentina last year for the Subaru team, looking more and more of a competitive force with every event. The result in the end with the luck wasn't too bad, but the rally wasn't as good as Second place, probably not a disappointment for Carlos Sainz, his first event back with Ford. Just take a look at how scary this can get, though. Para 
Gravity. Frightening stuff. Carlos Sainz, though, second place at the end of the Rally Monte Carlo. Well, it was more damp than I expect, so I have the tires a little bit hard for these conditions, but it was coming cloudy and putting more water, more wet in the road. The victor, though, and the man who ran away with this event, Tommy Mackinnon, starting once again his title defence with victory in Monte Carlo as he did last year. His 20th World Rally Championship victory and another dominating performance from Mackinnon and Mitsubishi. It was generally much easier because weather condition was so much better. It was uh, much drier. M most most of the time we run all the time uh, uh, tarmac tire and, and just a few stages with some sort of uh, snow tire. It was so much e so much easier condition. Of course, it's always slippy some places here, but uh, not at all like previous years. So Tommy Mackinnon takes victory, as he says, one of the drier Monte Carlo rallies in recent years. Two minute, uh, one minute to 24.9, his uh, victory margin over Carlos Sainz, and uh, Colin McRae ruining that lost chance of third place. Juha Kankinen taking that ahead of Tony Gardemeister, Bruno Thierry and Freddy Loix. In seventh place, Olivier Bury, the top privateer, wins the Prince Albert Trophy. In ninth place, Manfred Stoll winning in Group N from Gustavo Trellis and Gianluigi Galvi, uh, Galli, first, second and third in their Mitsubishis, respectively. Another dominant performance in both categories for Mitsubishi. The points reflecting how they finished on round one of the series. Macken already with the advantage, both in terms of points and in terms of mental superiority as they go in the second week of February to Sweden. Another rally you'll be able to see on Eurosport with our nightly reports. And again, Toby Moody will be in the trenches, wrapped up rather warmer, I think, and I'm sure in between times, teams will spend a lot of time cold starting cars. Embarrassment for multi-million dollar operations flat batteries. Just a reminder, Monday night, 9.30 CET, slightly more human hours, that's 8.30 in the UK. Highlights of the three days, including unseen onboard footage. It'll be an hour long. Join me for that on Monday night. Until then, Martin Haven saying thank you for watching and stay tuned to Eurosport, Europe's sport number one.